नमस्कार वेलकम बैक लेट इज एंजॉय लर्निंग सम मोर कंसेप्ट फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक लेट इज अंडरस्टैंड इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड to understand this let me consider two point charges placed in vacuum let me denote this one charge by capital q and the other charge by small q this capital q this charge i call it the source charge and the other one which i bring near this charge q capital q is called the test charge so let me keep this source charge at the origin o and let me bring this test charge and place it at some point p such that its position vector is r then this test charge experiences a force due to the source charge the charge does not uh, exert force on this other charge right then what is that which exerts force on a charge let us understand this how do you find what is a force that is given by coulomb's law so what it will be it will be f is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 q into q divided by r square into unit vector r now what does it mean suppose i have a small charge here point charge cap q I denote it by capital Q. At this point P, suppose I bring a charge Q. Now this experiences a force due to this charge Q. Now if I remove this, if I remove this, if this is removed, then what remains here in the vicinity? In this space, there is something because of which. when i bring a small charge q at this point it experiences a force that means something acts on it to produce the force that something is we got we call as electric field all right so how do we what is the expression written for uh, electric field that is equal to e which is a function of r which depends on r is equal to force divided by the charge which is brought so how do you define electric field electric field at a point is defined as the force that a unit positive charge would experience when placed at that point so the expression for electric field will be equal to the 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 q multiplied by capital q divided by this small q which is brought into r square to unit vector r this q will cancel so finally what do i get electric field is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 q upon r square into unit vector r so where unit vector is as you know it is a vector divided by its magnitude so we find that the force which is exerted is equal to the charge times the electric field and its si unit is newton per coulomb si unit of electric field is newton per coulomb so how do we define electric field electric field due to a charge q at a point in space may be defined as the force that a unit positive charge would experience if placed at that point now i use two terms one source charge and other one test charge what is a source charge the charge which produces this electric field is called the source charge and the charge which tests this uh, electric field experiences the force is called the test charge okay the source charge remains confined at the position which i have specified if i have kept it at the origin it should be there at the origin so this test charge is so small that it doesn't influence the uh, field of of uh, 
source charge. So how do you keep it confined to that? There are some unspecified forces. So with, uh, we can keep the source charge stationary. Right? We, we understand that the electric field does not depend on the test charge. It does not depend on test charge. How do we represent them? So electric field uh, of a positive charge, suppose this is a positive charge, then it is going outward. The direction is outward. And if it is a negative charge, the direction will be inwards. Okay. So this is the direction of electric field. Since the force depends on the distance of the test charge from the uh, source charge, electric field also depends on the distance. Okay. If this is the charge and then if I am considering the at a some distance r, if I am finding out what is the electric field here, at the same distance from here, the electric field will be same. So, at the same distance if I try to find, so that will give you a sphere around that charge, you will find the electric field will be same. Right? Find electric field due to system of charges. Like how we found the force on one charge due to another charge and then we found force on one charge due to number of charges. So same way we are going to find electric field due to a system of charges. Now we, when we are finding, we find the electric field at a point, at a point due to number of charges. So as we have already uh, stated for the force, it is the same way we use the superposition principle. So what will be the electric field? It will be equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 Q1 due to Q1. Suppose I am finding at this point I want to find electric field. Right. And there are so many number of charges around it. So at this position due to charge Q1 what is the electric field? Then I will find what is the electric field due to charge Q2 another charge q3 is here then what is the electric field at this point due to this charge q3 this is how i'll find out and then i'll add it up so it is q1 upon r1 p so the distance from a uh, distance of point p from charge q1 this will be the unit vector same way distance of point p from charge q2 so how do we go? E electric field will be 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 Q1 upon R1P the whole square into unit vector R1P plus Q2 upon R2P the whole square into unit vector R2P and so on. If there are n number of uh, charges then this will be the uh, equation. So how can I write it? E electric field is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 summation of QI upon RIP the whole square where uh, into unit vector RIP where I ranging from 1 to N. So now you must be very well versed with this way, I mean how to express it in terms of summation sign. So E is a vector quantity that varies from one point to another point in space and is determined from the positions of the source charge. It depends on the source charge. Now let us see how we represent electric field. So representation of electric field due to a point charge. Since electric field is a vector, we denote or we represent the field, electric field with the help of vectors. So the length of the vector is proportional to the strength of the field. So as you go away, the length is decreasing because the electric field strength also decreases as you go away from the charge. So if it is negative charge, the field line will be field, uh, electric field vector will be pointing inwards. Now if I join these vectors, I get a line. So I can say it is electric field line. When we connect the arrows in one direction, the resulting figure represents the field line. 
But how do we know about the strength now? Because as I said earlier, the length of the vector is proportional to the electric field strength. So if I join it, it becomes a line. Does it mean that we have lost the strength concept? No. To understand that, let us understand about solid angle. When we draw an angle on a paper, it is two dimensional figure. So say for example, if I have a length, then it subtends some angle. This length subtends an angle at this point. So this is a two dimensional figure. So this is angle say delta theta. How do I express delta theta? If this is delta L, the length, and this distance is R, then delta theta is equal to delta L divided by R. This is a plane angle. Let us understand things with respect to three dimensions now. So, if I talk about three dimension, it is in all directions. So, say for example, spear. If I consider a spear, it is three dimensional figure. Say for example, if I consider some area on the spear, then that area will subtend an angle at the center of the spear. So, the angle subtended at the center of the spear by a small area of the spherical surface is a cone, right? So, if I consider this area, then it subtends an angle and that is a cone. Now, this is a three-dimensional figure. So, it is a cone, right? So, I can say this is a cone. So, what is that three-dimensional angle, right, which we call a solid angle? This cone, this, we call it as solid angle. How do we write it? If this is delta S and if this length is R, then I'll write it as delta omega. I'll represent the solid angle by delta omega. So, delta omega will be equal to delta S, that is this area divided by r square. So, if I consider a charge, say positive charge, then the field lines will be going away from it in all directions, right? This way. So, you can see they are in all directions. So, if you consider a sphere around it, so it is like this, in all directions it is going. So, let me consider a surface slightly away, some distance away from the charge. So, that surface will, say for example, if I had considered a sphere, then surface on that sphere, then that will subtain an angle, which is a solid angle at the charge, right? So, it will be a cone, that is a solid angle. So, if I consider it this as R1 and the position of this surface area at P1. Then I can see that the field lines okay, crossing this area will be this way. So there are certain number of field lines say for example are crossing this area. So if I consider another area at a distance say say at a position p2 at a distance r2 from the charge then the same set of field lines are crossing this area so number of field lines crossing this area at position p1 and this area at position p2 are the same they are constant so what is the solid angle now here at this position, if I consider this delta omega, so this solid angle will be equal to delta S1. Say this area is delta S1 upon R1 square. If I consider this area, what will I get? Again, the same angle, solid angle, delta omega will be equal to 
delta S2. Say this area at position P2 is delta S2. That divided by R2 square. So delta S1, say this area, will be equal to, this area will be equal to R1 square into delta omega. Right? Similarly, I can say delta S2 will be equal to R2 square into delta omega. Now, if there are say n number of lines passing through these areas, okay, these lines passing through these areas is n in number, then if I consider a unit area here and a unit area at this position, will the number of lines passing through this unit area be the same? No, they'll differ. Right? Here, the number of field lines passing through this unit area is less. Whereas here it is more. If you go still deeper, it will be still more. Right? So, what will be the number then? N divided by the area. And here it will be N divided by this area. This is the strength of the electric field. That's why we say concentration of field lines is more than the strength is more. So, since n and delta omega is constant, you can see the strength depends on 1 upon r squared. So, as you go away, the electric field falls as 1 over r squared. The strength of the electric field reduces, decreases by 1 over r square. So, spreading of the field lines with distance from the sphere tells us that magnitude of the electric field decreases with distance from the sphere and the dependence is 1 upon r square. Now, let us consider a plus charge and a minus charge. Now here I am considering unequal charges. So say for example this is plus 4 and this is minus 1 or I can say this is plus 3 coulombs and this is minus 1 coulomb. So if you see this combination from very large distance you feel as if there is a charge say for example plus 3 and minus 1 so it will be plus 2. So, it is as good as you are seeing a field of charge plus 2. So, when there are unequal charges, the field lines are in the space are something like this. Right? Now, if I place a say positive charge, test charge, very small charge, at this position, will it will be accelerated of course because there is an electric field. And any charge in the electric field will get accelerated. But which direction? So, first of all, will it travel along this field line? No. It will be, it will get accelerated. But in which direction will it move? It will move in the tangential direction. In the tangential direction. If I place it here, again, it will be in the tangential direction. So, the direction of the field is given by a tangent to the field line. It is tangential. If it was a negative charge, it will be in the opposite direction. So, suppose then the charge moves and it meets this field line here. Then which direction will it move? So, it will move since it is a positive charge, it will move in this direction. Okay, Tangential to the field line. So, these are not the trajectories. These are field lines but the charge will move tangential to the field line at that given point. You can also see concentration of field lines is more so that means strength of the field is more. Here it is less. Okay. Now if these charges are equal then what happens? That is a special case. Okay, we will see it little later. Now, let us understand the properties of the field line. So, here the field lines always, electric field lines originate on a positive charge. 
an end on a negative charge. So we'll see it further. The field lines start from positive charge and they end at negative charges. If there is single charge, the lines may start or end at infinity as we have already seen it before. In a charge free region, electric field lines can be taken to be continuous curves without any break. What I mean is, in the space where there is no charge, the lines will be continuous. But they don't form a continuous loop. No, electric field lines do not form continuous loops. They start and end. Okay, but what happens in the space where there is no charge, they will be found continuous. So, two field lines can never cross each other. If they did, then the field at that point of intersection will not have a unit direction, which is absurd, which cannot happen. So, that means the two field lines can never cross each other. Electrostatic field lines do not form closed loops. As I have already mentioned, this flow, uh, follows the conservative nature of electric field. You can see here, two equal positive charges. In this case, you can see the field lines are going away from the positive charge and also they are going away from each other. If I take equal and opposite charge, that means one positive and negative and they are equal in magnitude, then it forms a dipole. You can see the field lines are originating at positive charge and they end at a negative charge. They do not form closed loop. The field lines are imaginary lines. They are used to represent the field. In case of negative charge, you can see the field lines are going inwards. In case of a positive charge, you can see they are going outward. So, the picture looks perfectly symmetric. Whereas, I had shown you earlier two unequal charges and the field lines which you saw, the picture was not symmetric. Here it is perfectly symmetric. I hope you have understood this very well. That's all for today. See you next time.